Sierra Leone, one of the five poorest countries in the world that was devastated by the 12-year civil war that lasted until 2002. A country where one in every five children will not make it to the age of five and where 75% of the people live on a budget under two dollars per day. Mercy Ship's hospital ship, the Africa Mercy, is visiting Sierra Leone to perform free life-saving surgery for the poor. To witness the good work of Mercy Ships, four Dutch radio amateurs went on their third Mercy Ships the Expedition in spring 2011. The expedition held the call sign 9 Lima 5 Mike Sherra, 9 L5 Mercy Ships, with the goal to not only communicate by ham radio, but also to find sponsoring for a charity project of Mercy Ships. This is the story of their expedition. The preparations of the expedition went by the book. In December 2010, all materials like antennas, food and drinks, generators, coax cable and so on were ready for shipment by freight container well in advance of the expected expedition starting date of 14 March 2011. All goods were moved to Gouda in the Netherlands where the European distribution center of Mercy Ships is located. Here the team met with Aad van Noppen of Mercy Ships who is in charge of logistics. The question was of course when the expedition material would be on its way to Sierra Leone. Nou, wat, we hier in, wat we hier in Gouda doen is dat we de spullen binnen Europa verzamelen. Dus materialen komen van ons kantoor in Engeland, kantoor in Duitsland. En dan staan we hier tijdelijk op. En van hieruit eigenlijk distribueren we het. Heb je ooit een idee wanneer dit de container ingaat en wanneer het naar boord gaat? Eind januari. Eind januari. Eind januari. De container in? De eerste eind januari of midden januari hier de container in. En dan komen we midden februari komen we aan. During the final preparations of equipment and other luggage, the container transport got delayed and the team decided to start the expedition two weeks later on March 28. So time for some extra checks on the equipment. A few days before departure, Murphy struck, as Ad BA8 AD explains. Three days to go to the expedition, why are you smiling? Well, first of all because we are counting down and we are looking forward to, uh, to go to Sierra Leone to start the expedition. And I'm smiling because it's uh, becoming a bit more complicated because the material we shipped up front will not be available uh, at least during the first week. So we are improvising now. Uh, we have to think about uh, antennas, what can we uh, improvise, we have to think about food, we have to think about our personal luggage to see how we can really start the project. In a few hours the team designed a new station setup with the means they had available instantly, a few fishing rods, some wire and some coax cables. That should be enough for three verticals capable of working from 10 meters to 40 meters. With the extra antenna luggage the team arrived on Brussels airport to board the plane to Sierra Leone. I asked the team members how they felt this morning just before departure. Maar uh, ja, het is erg spannend. Het was heel spannend bij het uh, inchecken. Maar uh, door onze charmes in de strijd te gooien hebben we toch uh, voor elkaar gekregen dat we naar Sierra Leone mogen gaan. Nou, ik ben helemaal blij dat het gaat. Ja. En ik ben ook blij vooral dat de laatste weken nog wat strubbelingen waren. Dingetjes die niet helemaal... In... Nou, laten we nou eigenlijk zeggen dat de hele trein ze nu en dan een beetje ontspoorde. En, uh, we hebben hem aardig op de rails gekregen. Je derde de expeditie van Mercy Ships? Ja. Drie maal rechte scheep terecht hè? en we gaan naar het schip en dan gaan we een aantal dagen helpen en eh, daarna gaan we onze activiteiten starten. Hartstikke leuk, ik heb er zin in. Eh, ik denk dat we goed voorbereid zijn en we gaan er eh, een succesvolle eh, expeditie van maken, daar ben ik van overtuigd. Nou Ari, wat vind je ervan? Ik vind het uh, heel bijzonder, niet alleen dat we voor een expeditie gaan, maar dat we ook een weekje kunnen spanderen aan het goede werk van Mercy Sips. Ik vind het een geweldig avontuur, dat mag je wel weten. Traveling to Freetown in Sierra Leone took a full day and at 11 o'clock in the evening the four radio operators finally arrived on board the Africa Mercy. The container with all equipment was still halfway the customs process, which was nicely covered by the expression, this is Africa. So time to execute what was called Plan C, meaning 
working on board the hospital ship as a volunteer for a week and then start the radio the expedition, container or no container. The radio team was added to the engineering staff of the ship. Chief engineer had quite the job for them. The radio communication of the ship with the Land Rovers was not working properly and the crew had been struggling with it since their arrival in Sierra Leone in February. Well, what are hams for? It took a day of troubleshooting and testing the system that included a repeater and GPS data and a solution was found. During the week all radios were updated with newly configured software. Besides radio, other electrical repairs in the engine room were done as well by Ari PA3AN who has experience as a ship's electrician. During the week the team got a good taste of living on board the Africa Mercy. At weekdays the engineering and deck crew come together at 7.45 am before work for a devotional. Quite a happening. But it's time to move on. After one week on board the Africa Mercy the team was ready to start the expedition with the Plan C equipment since the container was still unavailable. A spare Mercy ship generator was prepared and was loaded up for transport to the mountains along with all the other stuff. The 9L5MS location was at Portersville in the Peninsula Mountains. A beautiful house in the middle of nowhere with a nice garden big enough for three verticals. Unbelievable that a place like this can exist in a poor country like Sierra Leone after you've seen Freetown. The radio shack was set up in the garage of the house. There was some wood available, so half an hour later a custom designed table was made. In the meantime, the team started to build the three multiband verticals. This is our 10 meter antenna. We take out the 40 meters, we roll it up up there, then we hang on here, our 10 meter antenna, and then we work huge pilots on 10 meters. We still have no beams at this time, we hope to have them later uh, this week, but until then we work with antennas like this. Mike in the radio. Roger from Moscow, United for Mike India Radio. Your 5 and 9 also, thank you. Thank you, 73. 73, is it? The price to pay for three verticals transmitting in one garden was station interference on some bands. So the ladder dipole was made to reduce that a bit, being horizontally polarized. Finally, two weeks after the team's arrival in Freetown, the container was cleared by the customs and delivered to the ship. The container was unloaded immediately. The radio amateurs were not the only persons waiting for their gear. That same evening all equipment was loaded onto a truck and transported to the house in the mountains. The next morning building of the new antennas started early. The goal was to have two spider beams for 10 meters to 20 meters, a five elements beam for 6 meters and monoband verticals for 30, 40, 80 and 160 meters. The 5 band spider for 10 to 20 meters was placed in the garden near the 40 meter vertical. A second spider beam, a tribander, was assembled just outside the garden and was placed at the end of the path from the main road to the house. The 
team had taken two long verticals for 160 and 80 meters and several receiving antennas as well. But there was just no room for them, so it was decided that only one large vertical would be used on 80 meters for three nights and after that it would be retuned for 160 meters for the rest of the week. The receiving antennas stayed unpacked. For six meters, an old five element tonne Yagi was set up for terrestrial QSOs as well as for moon bounce. Moon bouncing would be a real challenge because of the relatively low gain of the antenna. About 50 terrestrial 6 meter QSOs were logged mostly during the afternoon. The best moment for a QSO via moon bounce was at around 4 am in the early morning when the moon would be just above the horizon. Two QSOs got into the log, a first between Sierra Leone and North America. Being focused on the radio expedition almost makes you forget the beautiful surroundings of the house. After two weeks of radio, it was time to head back home and start packing. All usable things like generators, electricity cables, tools and so on were taken to the ship and found their way to Mercy Ship Shore projects. All transceivers and antennas and lightweight coax cables were taken back to the Netherlands. After one more night on board the Africa Mercy, the team said goodbye to a lot of new friends. For sure, it is a unique community serving on board world's largest hospital ship. The trip home began with crossing the river delta with a small boat. It was a bumpy ride but the team made it to the airport just in time and arrived home safely with lots of stories to tell. <laughs> <laughs>